All stories are ultimately about man's reconciliation with elements of his own psyche. Their purpose is to aid in the continued journey toward knowledge of self as the only means of spiritual healing in the prospect of our existential woes. The playground of our experience of the outer world is received solely within the soul of man. Yet our psyches are as trees constituting a portion that is revealed, rooted in the portion that is hidden. The unconscious realm is like the blackness within the earth below, the inmost cave, the underworld, the unknown. The hidden state of latency and potentiality, the belly of the whale, the vast and dark black and blue ocean, a formless unity of alchemical prima materia, out of which springs forth in fiery ascent the pillars of our own ego consciousness thus formed. The baptismal water of the unconscious is where the ego goes, dying to be reborn, making the dead living and the living dead, darkness to light, light to darkness. Thus, Carl Jung's collective unconscious is the world womb, the belly of the whale, the matrix of all potentiality, where floating archetypal snares reach for and connect all of us. What will you see when you look into the sea of your own unconscious? Nietzsche's shadowy abyss that stares back at you is merely the inverted image on the mirror of the ocean's surface, beckoning you to descend, to swallow you whole through its doorway, to confront your own self. The word nightmare is a joining of the English word night and Old English word mare or incubus, thus denoting an evil female spirit or monster thought to produce the sensation of suffocation in a sleeper. This is the threatening aspect of the waters of the unconscious. It could be suffocating. Yet the promise of treasure, the promise of regenerative truth beyond good and evil, both beautiful and ugly, resides here. To launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway. If one would only take the leap of faith in initiatory descent, archetypal knowledge from the fount of wisdom of the ancients can be plucked as the boon for renewal and recreation of the community, the world at large. The miracle of rebirth lies in the humbling death of the fiery ego above, a reawakening of that which has been forgotten, lying dormant below within the genesis chamber of the unconscious. The way of the soul in search of its lost father leads to water, says Jung, to the dark mirror. When the image of the intellect and ego reach their peak, when the sun flies too close to the sun, as did Icarus, we return back into the cooling regenerative waters to die and be reborn anew. It is within this Indian ocean of the unconscious that the black prima materia is extracted, the elixir of eternal life, the anima, the divine feminine within man, However, the bringing to light of these unconscious figures, that is, the union of consciousness, soul or yang, with its feminine counterpart, the unconscious, luna or yin, has undesirable results to begin with, for it produces poisonous animals. You're digging up snakes, Lo. It's kind of dangerous. Indeed, no. all is buried here. The, bat is dead. the demons, the Bam. bats, the dragons, the ogres, the werewolves, Mr. Hyde. The bull or beast in man is sourced here. 
The shadow that has not been successfully brought to conscious integration threatens to bubble to the surface, making its way across that ocean of the unconscious to reach you in unexpected I ways. Across an ocean of stars to reach you. Chaotic and fluid in form. Surrender within 24 hours. For instance, the seemingly innocent desire to belong, to be with your real family, your real people has its People. negative manifestation. And every action I take, no matter how violent or how cruel, is for the greater good of my people. And now, I have no people. We're taken to its extreme threatens to separate you from the ones worth loving already near. Your family, not mine. I don't even know why I'm listening to you. You're not my dad. You're just some guy who found me in a field. Clark! Product of the failures of our world as much as so it was. So I'm alone. The shadow image, your inner opposite, represents those buried, unresolved sentiments fully coagulated into its extreme. You led us here, Cap. And now it's within your power to save what remains of your race. Conquering this image of the oppressive animal within, this monster, this minotaur, this demon, is to conquer your own ego so that you may be freed from its tyrannical constraints, leaving with the boon of the feminine. If one could endure the trial of the baptismal waters of the unconscious, one could experience the miracle of renewal, of regeneration, of transformation, of change, cleansing and cooling the fiery, animalistic, impulsive ego drives. But tread carefully, for the waters of the unconscious are dangerous like a storm, and not adequately operating within a certain level of faith in the process risks suffocation, drowning in its vast ocean. Yet it is here that a towering bully becomes a humble and loyal disciple. It is here where the octagonal baptismal font collects its cleansing waters, a pool of Bethesda granting the tyrannical half-man, half-bull minotaur access to his inner relational feminine principle. This is the location of the sacred marriage of the masculine and feminine energies, fire and water, solar and lunar. The unconscious brought to conscious awareness by appearance of the Lady of the Lake. The inner psychic union of the heavenly and earthly occurs in the cleansing bath of the unconscious. But before it does, man may be stuck in a psychic imbalance relying too heavily on the aggressive top-down masculine principle to solve his existential woes. Desperately clinging to his own impermanent ego and masculine persona binds him here. Man's inner feminine is thus, in effect, imprisoned in the cage below, deep in the unconscious mind, within the waters of the earth, black and blue. As he exhausts the use of the fires of ego, the sacred feminine is drowning in the lake of the unconscious. To free himself from the trap and cycles of ego, he must listen to the banging and cries from below, that is, from within the waters of his own psyche. Thus freedom from the inflated ego as tyrant is necessarily coupled with freedom and rebirth of his inner divine feminine, the anima, the lady of the lake, saving her from drowning in that lake, the sea, the ocean of the unconscious. 
as a baptismal rite, he dies and is reborn, changed, renewed upon the humbling and loving foundation of the relational feminine principle. This is my world. You are my world. In harmony, not in place of or instead of, but in harmony with the masculine principles discovered in his own psyche. Cleansed in the bath of the unconscious, he is no longer oppressed by his own ego and is able to receive the force of things superior and inferior mentioned in the Emerald Tablet that vanquishes every subtle thing and penetrates every solid thing, spirit and matter, mind and body. So was the world created, allowing him to surpass physical limitations that by appeal to intellect alone would only hold him back imprison him, oppress him. This is the freeing power of faith and love that transcends the merely rational appeal to physical law. So freeing the feminine corresponds to death of the fiery ego tyrant, but it can occur simultaneously or in reverse, where destroying the fiery and inflated ego tyrant frees the feminine from being stuck in the distant and yet nearby unconscious. This is the meeting with the goddess and the boon at once, the new foundation harmoniously incorporating his inner opposite rather than unconsciously being trapped and controlled by it. Swim towards it, honey.